Uh, three things you should know about these Panthers. They've already clinched the division for the third straight year. That had never been done in this division. They clinch a first round bye with a win or tie or a Green Bay loss or tie. So that's what's at stake today. As far as those Packers, they're taking on the Cowboys. It'll be America's Game of the Week coming up later today on Fox, a 425 kick Eastern time. We've got a great day of football and an unbelievably ridiculous day weather-wise here. It's December, John, <laughs> and it's 70 degrees, and we were actually sweating on the field before. It's toasty. I put my flannels on. It's December. <laughs> It's been warm on the entire East Coast, but it is flat out gorgeous here today. And these fans are all kinds of fired up. And so is the Atlanta head coach, Dan Quinn, in his first year trying to turn around this Falcons program. They got off to a 5-0 start uh, since, obviously, they've really had some trouble. They've lost their last five. And, John, they've been in every single game. They just have made really big mistakes at critical times. Yeah, and in critical spots, turnovers in the red zone, turnovers in the fourth quarter. Things like that, Dan Quinn, that's why he was angry this week. I really believe in talking to the Falcons, they're going to come out and play inspired football today. And so the Falcons won the toss. They deferred, and here we go from Charlotte. That's out of the end zone from Bosher. And so we will see Cam Newton and the Panthers offense. Starting on the 20-yard line, Cam has been outstanding in his career in the month of December, 15-3. That's getting it done. Well, Howie Long talked about it in the pregame show. Cam in the clutch. That's why I think he's the MVP of this league right now. What he's doing in the red zone, what he's doing in the fourth quarter, and you see in December, he's always been a finisher. This team runs the ball more than anybody in the NFL. That's what their game is based on. And, of course, Newton has put himself right in the thick of the MVP race this year with the way he's played. That's Brown in motion. We'll start it off with the run, and that's not even going to get too much. A short game as Hageman in on the tackle. Carry by Stewart. So for these Carolina Panthers, best team in the NFL. They're undefeated. Can they continue and finish the season undefeated? That's the question with four more to go. Number one MVP, that's Cam Newton. He has certainly played like it. John will discuss as the game goes on. And then a championship caliber defense certainly looks that way. They're third overall in defense in the NFL. Second and seven, and Newton will throw it, and he slings it over the middle, and he's got a completion. And that is the tight end, Olsen, who has developed into one of the finest in the league. It is a first down. Well, Kevin, someone forgot to tell Greg Olsen that he's getting old. He's supposed to be slowing down, but no, he's playing his best football of his career, productive in the pass game. Cam trusts him immensely, and in the run game, a great blocker, a complete tight end is Greg Olsen. And so a first down for the Panthers from the 34. They'll give it to Stewart. Great hole! Jonathan Stewart in the Falcons territory, run out of bounds inside the 25. What a start for the undefeated Panthers. Well, Kevin, this run game of the Atlanta, uh, excuse me, of the Carolina Panthers. Watch Greg Olson. He's going to come in motion. Then he's going to be the lead blocker coming through for Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan Stewart sees the big hole, explodes through that hole. They run it frequently, and they run it very well. That's a season-high 44-yard run for Stewart, and now Panthers from the 22. A little zone read. Newton fires, knocked away. Good play from Robert Alford, who had the coverage. And a second down is coming. And you just see how this Carolina Panthers offense operates. It's built around Cam Newton. They're in the gun a lot, the read option. It opens up a lot of holes. Cam Newton affects the entire defense. They have to account for him. Then you get people playing the run, and you pop the play action on them. It's a, it's a machine that when it gets going, it's tough to stop. Give you so many different looks. They go eye formation this time. Devin Funches, the rookie, bottom of your screen. They'll fake it all day. Now Newton in trouble. Pressure, he throws it away. You got late pressure from Troy Bierman, and we also have a flag back at the 29-yard line. Tony Carrenti is our referee today in his 21st season. Holding offense number 67, 10-yard penalty, and repeat second down. They're going to get Ryan Khalil, the center and the anchor of this Carolina defense. 
They go a little max protection. They're trying to get a shot down the field. He's at the top of our screen, and he's got a fistful of Croy Bierman, number 71's jersey. Good call by Tony Corrente and his crew. Well, I'll move it back to a second and 20, back up at the 32. Fozzie Whitaker in the game at the running back, number 43. On second down, four-man rush. Newton going to fire, and it's caught inside the 10. Dropped, picked up by Atlanta, and it's a turnover. Olsen lost it, Allen's got it, and the Falcons have the football. Greg Olsen already motioning that he thinks he's down. Let's check it out. Left knee down, he's got possession of the football. That will be a catch, and Greg Olsen's football. Then the question remains Kevin okay you got to control it don't through the process of going to the ground and so does is it a catch that's well the call on the field obviously Falcons ball but every turnover is reviewed so Ron Rivera won't have to throw a flag let's take another look Well, there's no question it's not a turnover. Now we just confirm whether or not it's a catch, whether he was a runner, and that will be a catch. We'll confirm that with Mike Pereira. Review in Carolina on a big play. We're back. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. We're back in Charlotte. They look at this play, and we'll have the official announcement from Tony Corrente right here. After review, the Carolina receiver possessed the ball and was down by contact at the eight yard line. For the Carolina's ball, first down. Mike Pereira, do you agree here? Yeah, absolutely. There are two things they had to look at. Maybe most importantly, first, was it a catch? They had to deem first whether he was going to the ground or whether he was on his feet. He gets control. Two feet, braces for the contact. There's that element of time, so he became a runner. And then the knee was on the ground before the ball came out. It was a good call and replay to reverse that. Thanks, Mike. And so a 25-yard gain on a first and goal from the eight. Here's Stewart. And he's up the middle. He's going to pick up two. Kevin, first of all, thank you, Mikey. You make it so clear. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows what's a catch anymore, but Mike Pereira does. But I think what was lost in that, that throw by Cam Newton. Oh. I mean, you're in second and 20, and that throw is just, people don't make that throw. He makes it look so easy, and that's what he's done all season. And here in the red zone, Cam has been just superb. I mean, 26 total touchdowns, no interceptions. One of the reasons why they've excelled. Second and goal. Newton in trouble. Somehow escapes and throws it away. And now a late hit here. And there's the flag. So he gets out of his sack. He draws a penalty. Here comes a first and goal. Unbelievable. First of all, there is no intentional grounding. Quarterback was outside the pocket, threw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Looking to pass it. Defense number 50. Unnecessarily hit the quarterback after the pass was away. Half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Well, first of all, you don't say this often when you have a quarterback versus a nose guard, but that's a mismatch. Grady Jarrett's free. He can't bring him down. O'Brien Schofield, Kevin, we talked in the open. Dan Quinn was angry with his defense. He wanted more effort. Sometimes that's the byproduct. You've got these guys so pumped up that they're going to do things like that. A critical error in a critical spot. It's what's been ailing this team of late, both offensively and defensively. So they had a penalty to put him in second and 20, and then Newton fires a seed for a first down. They had what looked like a big play and a sack there, and instead he gets out of it, draws a penalty, and here you have a first and goal from the three. Opening drive for these Panthers after the Falcons won the toss and deferred. Stewart has it, close, and down, just shy. Second down. 
Jonathan Stewart so effective in driving his legs. Most of his yards come after contact. He's a tough guy to bring down by virtue of his strength, his stature. He's short and squatty, and he keeps those legs churning. A really tough running back. Jumbo package here for the Panthers. Daryl Williams, rookie lineman, comes in number 60. So does Mike Tolbert, who can pass for a lineman. He's so big as their fullback. So here we go. Stewart in the eye. Give it to him. Right over the top and touchdown. Here goes Cam finding a little one. <laughs> it's great that he does that. That is awesome. And I tell you, some, sometimes we make this game too difficult. Run behind your two best offensive linemen, Ryan Khalil and Trey Turner, the center, the right guard. They got right behind him, and Jonathan Stewart went up and over. So the Panthers go eight plays, 80 yards, and they didn't even get to a third down on that drive. Keep this in mind. They have missed three extra points this year. Here's Graham Gano. That one is true. Opening drive right down the field. There was 44 yards on the run by Stewart. It was a couple of rocket throws from Cam Olsen with the catch. Stewart with the touchdown. Celebration Cam. 7-0 Panthers Falcons football. We're sponsored by Bud Life, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Panthers didn't do much wrong on the opening possession right down the field. Jonathan Stewart, a 44-yard run. He finished it off with his sixth touchdown run of the year. Devin Hester back to return for the second week in a row. He's been out all year with a toe injury. And he will not take this one from eight yards out. John, we had a pretty good block on that touchdown run, huh? Well, I talked about Ryan Khalil being the anchor. Watch this double by he and Trey Turner. Then he's going to get up to the second level. It's just incredible fundamental football that's winning the line of scrimmage that's why ryan khalil's a pro bowl all pro player in the middle paul solii the falcons best run stuffer is out today with a calf injury so joey embu comes off the practice squad to make his debut and get absolutely plowed over at the goal line as you said welcome to the nfl <laughs> so the falcons in an early hole down seven zip and now they touch the ball for the first time from the 20, they're going to run it to Devontae Freeman, trying to stretch it to the outside, not much. Shaq Thompson on pursuit. As we get a look at Matt Ryan, who is Keekly on the play. Matt Ryan coming in, Johnny. Look, this guy has been an excellent quarterback in this league. He's fifth in the league in passing yards this year. But something is just a tick off with his game. Yeah, and I think it is. Look, Matt Ryan's been a Pro Bowl quarterback in his eighth year. I don't care how long you've played. When you're in a new system, he's trying to learn that. We're seeing him go through the growing pains. And the 13 interceptions, that's the biggest issue that he's having. He's loose with the football this year. On second and 10, they'll run it again. And Freeman this time gets a block. Devontae Freeman with a big run. The Falcons needed it across the 40. He's going to pick up 21. Well, we've all discovered this year what a special football player Devontae Freeman is. Watch Roddy White. He's getting in there with the big boys, blocking Roman Harper. That gives the cut to Devontae Freeman. He brings it all the way back outside Thomas Davis, and then he turns on the Jets. Devontae Freeman has great vision, great explosion. He's really a weapon for this Atlanta Falcons offense. He's second in the NFL in touchdowns as Freeman. Out now as Tevin Coleman comes in, number 26, and he lines up as a wideout, bottom of your screen. Ryan looking the other way, and there's Julio Jones. He lost it, and it trickles out of bounds. Gets a break. And that's going to be something to watch here today. Julio Jones, the league's leading receiver against Josh Norman, the Panthers' fantastic young cornerback. Yeah, but that time, and it speaks to the talent of Thomas Davis. They align him in the slot. It's his own defense. No problem. I'll go get Julio Jones and I'll get the ball out. Thomas Davis, Kevin, I'm just going to say this up front. It's a joke. He has not been to the Pro Bowl. One of the best linebackers in football. He deserves to go this year. I honestly couldn't believe that when I was looking at his numbers this week. I just assumed he was there. 
Second down, a little trickeration. Coming near side on the run. This is Coleman, and he's not going to go anywhere. He's going to lose a yard and a half. Roman Harper had a nice play there, and it'll be third down. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I like the misdirection, but sideline to sideline does not work because of this guy, Luke Keekley and Roman Harper. These guys are on their job, and they can run like the wind, especially Keekley in the middle. Sideline to sideline, not a good idea against the Carolina defense. This is one area where Atlanta has been great this year on third down. They're second in the league in converting moves. Blitz, Ryan near side, hits the tight end, and that's going to come up short. What a tackle. Kurt Coleman on the stop. Got a little melee Ooh. going. <laughs> a little, little fracas there. Hey, listen, this is... An NFC South game, the Falcons are, look, they've been playing poor football, and they're, they're a little ticked. That was Luke Keekley and Patrick DeMarco in the center of that, but smart football by the Carolina Panthers. They get up, and they get in that double-A gap look. Two guys, two linebackers right over the guard center gaps, and they put pressure in Matt Ryan's face. Knowing they have 10 yards to give, they give him eight, and a sure tackle by Kirk Coleman. Ted Ginn. Back to return, Matt Bosher's punt. He's had the best distance in the league this year. Again, always a threat to return mark. Bosher, high kick. Again, calls fair catch inside the 10. So a nice kick by Bosher. Panthers start deep in their own territory. More tempers flaring here as the Panthers get the ball. Their defense makes a play. Now it's back to Cam and company with a seven-point lead. We're sponsored by Pepsi. Go behind the scenes of the Pepsi Super Bowl 50 halftime show only on Pepsi.com. Well, the Falcons defense doesn't allow too many first drive touchdowns. 14 games since their last one until here today. And maybe even more impressive, Carolina did it without even a third down. And, John, we were having that conversation on the field. Carolina, you know, has been on third down decent this year. But that's not the whole story. <laughs> they don't get there much. Yeah. The Atlanta coaches were saying, that's our task. Get them the third down. They're rarely in it because they're so good on first and second down. And so they start deep in their own territory with score. He's going to bounce to the outside, and he's got a big run. Jonathan Stewart out to the 23, so it looked like nothing turned into 16. Let me tell you something. Here's what I know about Jonathan Stewart. The play is never over. You better keep playing on defense. He just hides behind those guys. He, he bounces off, and then he has the speed where he can get outside a corner. A very good back. I think this team's a better team. I love D'Angelo Williams, but I think when they have Jonathan Stewart as the lead back, I think they're a different team. Well, Jonathan Stewart's had a great year. He's already got two 100-yard games this year. He's got 68 yards, and they're only on their second drop. And his own read, Cam's going to keep it, and he'll be dropped at the 25. Game break time. Let's check in with Mike Hill. Guys, Bucks in that playoff mix. Saints trying to stay alive. Marcus Costa, three-yard touchdown catch from Drew Brees, his second of the season. Saints on top, 7-0 in Tampa. Dick David, back to you. All right, Mike, yeah. Bucks playing well, six and six right in the mix, but they can't lose that one. Cam picked up two on the last play, or three, so we'll call it a second and seven. A lot of time, airing it out, looking for Gann, he's got it! There's a flag, but he's gonna go! Touchdown, and let's wait on the penalty. 74 yards if it stands. It's going to be on the defense. I think they're getting him for an illegal contact or a hold. But I think the same official missed the offensive P.I. on Teddy Ginn throwing that right arm out there. Illegal contact, defense number 23. This penalty is declined as a result of the play. Touchdown. Watch the legal contact early, Kevin. Good call, but keep going on this play. Now watch this. The oh, right arm separation. Let's come on in. Yeah, 
You're right. It's what Ted Ginn brings to the table, though, that blow the top off the defense speed. He's had his drops, but Cam Newton keeps throwing to him because he can do that to a defense. You know, I, I'm just curious, going back to that, did he, if he stepped out. Let's watch. No, no not he's there. in. One more frame, two more frames. No, he's in. He's in. All right. 74-yard touchdown again. Extra point is good. It's his longest touchdown reception. And now another fight breaks out on the field. That's being broken up quickly. Man, the tempers are flaring early. But these undefeated Panthers are flying high here in Charlotte. What a start. It was a Jonathan Stewart touchdown run early. A bomb to Ginn now, and it's 14-0 Panthers. Well, if there's any even remote question about how good Carolina is, they're 12-0. They have coming out with daggers here against their division rival. 14-0. They've got the foot on the gas, and they haven't let up. They've gotten the big plays early, a big run from Stewart, the bomb to Ginn, and now the Falcons have to wake up before it's too late. Hester will take a knee, and Atlanta will have the ball for the second time at their own 20. You know, last week, you go back to the game they lost against the Bucs, and this is not the only reason why they lost, but this was a third and 19 against Jameis Winston. And after the game, Dan Quinn was furious about his team not finishing the play. And, John, you see why. Well, this is a team that's filled on effort. You see guys slowing down. He's not down. And as a result, that was a huge third down conversion. They've heard it. You're seeing them chippy. I talked in the open. I think they'll come out inspired. You see an inspired team. The question, Kevin, are they good enough to hang with the Carolina Panthers? The Carolina Panthers are showing why they're 12-0. They really are. And so 14-0 Panthers in a hurry. Here's Matt Ryan trying to get it back. It's to Marco. He's really turned into a pass-catching threat for this team. He's out to the 25. He's got five. You're the Atlanta Falcons now and Matt Ryan, Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator. You can't panic. you got to stay with your game plan. Try to get a drive here. Make this a one-score game. Stay with your plan. There's Shanahan, first season here with Dan Quinn. The offense has really struggled of late. Freeman tripped up, trying to get to the edge, but boy, is Keekly just a lightning bolt, and it's third down. It reminds me so much right there. It looked like Devontae Freeman had a big hole, and then phew, here comes Luke Keekley, and it's so reminiscent for me watching my old teammate, the Hall of Famer, Derek Brooks. It looks like you have something, but here comes Luke. Unbelievable, the speed he plays with and the way he finishes. Third and two. Blitz. Locked up, and Ryan finds his man, Hardy, with a nice catch, and he's got a first down. The rookie makes the play, but the line gave Ryan time. Yeah, that started with protection. You're going to see Hardy get the separation. It all started with the protection. Matt Ryan sees the crosser. You have the man on man. Hardy makes a really nice catch. It's what Matt Ryan talks about with Justin Hardy is his strong hands. He's a natural catcher of the football. On uh, first down, we get a penalty. We get a pitch to Freeman, and he goes nowhere, losing a yard, and will wait on the penalty. Falcons offense right in the middle of the pack, John. We told you about their struggles, though. Offside, defense number 94, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Last seven games, they've averaged 16 points a game. It's not them. That's why they've really struggled. And, and as for the storylines overall for this team, Angry Birds, because they haven't won the last five weeks, and they've had a chance in all of those games. Offensive chemistry, I just laid it out for you. They're not scoring, and the red zone has been a big, big factor here. Not only when they get there are they stalling, but they've turned it over in the red zone more than anybody in the NFL. Two big problems. Penalty helps, first and five. Stretch to Freeman, and he has nowhere to run. 
Let's go down the sidelines and we say hello to Pam Oliver. Well, Kevin, they are not off and running, but Falcons wide receiver Julio Jones told me that he feels that Atlanta has been playing not so much to win as not to lose. A huge difference. He said that's led to them playing really uptight. When they were rolling, they were playing loose, having fun, executing. All of those elements have dried up during this embarrassing slump. Kevin? Interesting for one of their big play guys to say something like that to Pam. Yeah, I think one of the things they need to do, Kevin, they need to throw the ball down the field. You got one of the great deep play threats in this league in Julio Jones, and they aren't doing it enough in my mind. Ryan back to pass. Over the middle. Jones tipped, and it falls incomplete. Norman on the coverage. That's that matchup that we're going to be watching today. I tell you what, we met with Josh Norman. And you see the eyes, the focus. This guy has been playing incredible football. He's long. He's a professional. His technique is flawless. But, Kevin, I haven't seen a guy that ready to play on Friday. He was frothing at the mouth. So ready. He said, I play the game for matchups like this. Third down and eight. The four-man rush. Pressure. Ryan had to get rid of it. It's incomplete. Jared Allen came in. What a veteran sign he has been for this Panthers team. And the Falcons will punt. Now Ryan has protection. They don't give up a lot of sacks, but watch the push. They get pushed back into Matt Ryan. The late pressure by Keekley. He has DeMarco, but can't get the ball to him. It's a relentless defense here in Carolina. I said signed by Allen. They traded for him from the Bears. He hasn't gotten the sacks, John, but he's done a real nice job here. And so Atlanta will punt. Boschers punt. And into the end zone. So the Panthers will take over on their own. 23-35 to go in the first. Cam Newton and company. It's a pretty good start for them, wouldn't you say? 14 points. They are clicking. And it's 14 zip for the undefeated Panthers. Dab away, y'all. There's Roman Harper, one of the veteran leaders of this defense. 12 0 are these Panthers, up 14 0 early. What a start they have had back here in Charlotte. Third possession, already 180 total yards in this first quarter for Carolina. And they won't get any more on this particular play. As that goes nowhere, Joey Embu playing in his first NFL game. Try and spell Embu, John. Can you do it? Well, I can, but I. It's MBU. <laughs> That's the uh, first NFL game off the practice squad for Paul Soliai on the inactive list today with an injury. So Embu getting in there. Falcons like to rotate all of their defensive linemen so everybody sees some time. Catcher in motion. They're going to run it. On the near side. And Stewart has a nice cut. Going to be a third down and long. Well, Cam Newton has had quite the year. There's no doubt about it. First of all, he's a huge human being. I mean, he's bigger than most average NFL linebackers, so wrap your head around that. That's why you can't tackle him. He uses his legs. In fact, he's got more rushing touchdowns than 12 NFL teams. And then you look at touchdowns combined with his legs, with his rocket arm, with the ability that he just can't be brought down. That's why he has been outstanding this year. On a third and eight. Late blitz over the middle. Corey Brown has the catch. Now the spot is huge, and I think he's going to have a first down. We'll see where they put down the football. It is a first down to Corey Brown. Well, Kevin, you mentioned all those things, and he is all of that and more. And you watch, I mean, just the arm strength. You watch the footwork. It's almost like kids don't watch this at home. Don't try it at home because that footwork is not correct. His front foot is not pointed at his target, but Cam Newton can get away with it because he is so athletically gifted. You talk about that size. I was standing with the GM, Dave Gettleman, the other day as we watched. He's got time. He fires, and he's got another completion. It's Olsen, the tight end, and he is on point today is Newton. Firing darts. That's good for 17. But Kevin Gettleman came from the New York Giants. Long time with the New York Giants. You watch Cam Newton and that size back there. He said 
You know who he reminds me of stature-wise? Michael Strahan. He's, he's Michael Strahan. His frame, and I started looking at him, that's exactly. So forget about NFL linebackers. He's as big as NFL defense alignment and bigger than some. First down, pressure, stands in, throws, and somehow he completed that to Jericho Cotterick. A terrific coverage with Wurlow all over him, but he got it in there. That's good for a six-yard game. Look, look at the play. I don't know how he fit it in. John, the other thing about Cam is he's got one of the great cadences in the league. Ready? Let's see if we can pick it up. Tries to get people off sides with it all the time. This so oh, intercepted but dropped. Alfred's got to pick that off right in his hands. And he can't make the play. Yeah, I tell you, Cam Newton not very happy with Devin Funches, and nor is Ricky Prohl, the wide receiver coach. They pull Funches off the field because you can't stop on a route like this. You're going to see Funches. He's blocking like it's a run play. He's never even on his route, so... The rookie with the mental mistake almost leads to the interception. 20 seconds to go in this first quarter. It's a third down and four. Delayed blitz. Protected. Airs it deep. There's Gim. He's got it. Touchdown. <laughs> what a show. What a show. Unbelievable. 227 yards in the first quarter. It's a Panthers record. Forty-six yards again, so he's got a 74-yard touchdown and a 46-yard touchdown, and the Panthers are flying here in Charlotte. Going deep to Ted Ginn, Cam Newton on fire. Giving balls away to the kids. Firing balls all over the field. And these Panthers are rolling. I said 227 yards in the quarter. That was actually the old record, John. 260 first quarter yards for the Panthers. It might look as, best, as good as they've ever looked here today against Atlanta. 21 to nothing. And they'll kick it off. Devin Hester might try and return just to get something going, and he will. Hester and gets out across the 20. You take a look at that last play, Kevin. It starts with protection. This front do an incredible job, as is Jonathan Stewart on the late blitz. And then Teddy Ginn matched up against a linebacker. Talk about don't try that at home. Don't put a linebacker on Ted Ginn. Free safety's late. Ted Ginn in the end zone. Ron Rivera told us the other day, you know, they had Ted Ginn. He went away yeah. out to Arizona. He brought him back, and in camp, he said to Ted Ginn, Ted, you know why you're here? He said, yeah, for special teams as a returner. He said, uh-uh, you're here to blow the top off defenses. Well, he's doing it. He sure is. Ryan to pass, steps away from pressure, goes far sideline. There's DeMarco, and he takes a good lick in, but he should be close to a first down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. What a first quarter it was at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Yeah, the Panthers have been on fire, that's for sure. Offense is clicking, and it's 21 to nothing, Carolina. The numbers say it all. 260 yards to 53 for the Falcons. Falcons defense has actually played all right lately. It's been the offense, but not today. They're getting torched. And so Matt Ryan and company start the second quarter down 21. They look for something positive, and that's not going to be it.
So Dan Quinn, we talked to him this week as we welcome you into the booth, John, and he said, hey, you know, these championship situations is what he called it. We, we've got to find out how to respond. This is a guy that was with Seattle, won a Super Bowl. He gets it. Uh, this, is a, this is a big uppercut right now. Yeah, you know, and I, I think one thing that Dan Quinn and Kyle Shanahan will figure out, you look at this Carolina, the, the, their opposition today, they have built an offense around their quarterback. Right now, I question whether this is playing to the strengths of Matt Ryan, who's been a very successful quarterback in this league. Blitz coming from the corner. He hits Freeman over the middle, and he beats it for a first down. You know, and I really feel like Kyle Shanahan is a bright offensive mind. I love some of the things he does, but I think the number one thing as a coach is to be flexible. Play to your talents, especially your quarterback. Matt Ryan is a drop back. Read the field. He's great above the neck, and then he's a great deep ball thrower. We aren't seeing the deep ball. We aren't seeing the progression read. Some of that is inhibited by their offensive line, who I think struggles to protect him. And it's just part of learning a new system. They're learning each other. On first down, they'll stick with the run. Freeman hard running before he meets Coleman. He's going to pick up four. Well, let me ask you this. I I'm throwing the deep ball. It's one thing Matt Ryan has really always done well in his career. This year, throwing balls in the air over 20 yards, he's done it 31 times. Last year, he did it 61 times. And I asked him about it, and he said, well, you know, the coverage dictates that. But, but you have Julio don't, Jones. Don't you just have to take shots sometimes? Yeah, I, I get it. You're going to have people on top of Julio. But sometimes I played against Randy Moss. They didn't care who was back right. there. They were throwing it deep. And it, it backs up a defense. They run it again. Freeman, nice jump cut. But then he is taken down by Thomas Davis. They are so fast. Let's get a game break. Check in with Kurt Menefee. All right, a mixed start for Seattle at Baltimore. Russell Wilson hooks up with the rookie Tyler Lockett on an eight-yard score, giving him a 7-0 lead. But on the opening drive, they lost running back Thomas Rawls for the day with an ankle injury. Of course, he's supposed to replace Marshawn Lynch. Kevin, John, mm. and Pam. All right, Kurt. Meanwhile, Russell Wilson coming into today. 11 touchdowns, no interceptions the last three weeks. Third down and six. Four-man rush, Ryan, and that's going to be short of the first down. That's not going to get it done. There's Roddy White, Finnegan on the coverage. Looks like they're going to go. Portland Finnegan, yet another veteran that they brought in. Jared Allen came in. They continue to build the depth of this team as they make their playoff, their championship run. Ron Rivera, Dave Gettleman have done a great job of bringing veterans in like that. On fourth down, they'll throw it. Ryan surveying over the middle to White, and he has got it. He goes back to the old veteran, and he picks up the first down and more tempers flare. And there's a late flag. That's two guys who have played a lot of football against each other. Roman Harper's been in this division for years, was with New Orleans, now with the Carolina Panthers. But these division matchups late in the year, a lot at stake. They're going to get like this. After the conclusion of the play on sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 41. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play and an automatic first down. John, we're talking about, to see the end of the play, about going deep to Julio Jones and getting Jones involved. He leads the league in catches. He leads the league in yards. The reality is... They need a number two. They need somebody else to step up today. And, Maybe it's him. And I think this is a good development. Is, is Roddy White what he once was? No. He doesn't have that speed. He doesn't have that separation. But I think you've got to get him involved because that will in turn open up Julio Jones. Let's say often in the second quarter the Falcons need a touchdown, but they need to settle this game down. They'll throw it. Pump. Oh, Ryan is drilled. Ball comes out way back at the 45, and Julio Jones all the way back to recover. K1 short, his eighth sack of the year. And that's just terrible protection by the Falcons. Kyle Shanahan drawing up a play that I like. He pumps out to the side on the fake bubble, then he's going to go down the field. But Levitra, the left guard, just gets run by by K1 short, who's playing just a really high level for 
the Carolina Panthers in the middle of that defense. Well, so much for the good feelings for Atlanta. It's second and 36. Get Jones involved. Julio looking for some blocks. Going to get some of it back. Down to the 40. Portland Finnegan was there on the tackle. Kevin K1 short defensive tackle. That's his eighth sack of the year in his 13th game. He's playing and he plays the run incredibly well. So this guy, K1 short, playing at a very, very high level. The second round draft pick out of Purdue. You know, they went, got a couple defensive tackles. They got Star Latulale in the first round. They picked Kwan Short in the second round that year. Both starters for this team. Just your run of the mill, third and 30. Ryan over the middle. Freeman dropped it. Oh, and it rains, it pours. And now you go from going for it and converting on fourth down, being down to 20. To punt it. But look, Devontae Freeman, he's a courageous player, but he felt Thomas Davis. And you feel this Carolina defense coming from all angles. Watch the finish. They give you some space, but then they're flying and they're going to hit you. Thomas Davis coming, Devontae Freeman feels it. Bosher will punt it away. The way today's going, I wouldn't let Ted Ginn touch this ball. He's already got two scores. Ball fair catch here, and he makes the grab at about the eight. Panthers will have it one more time. Their defense has been outstanding today. So is the offense, and they're up 21 zip. This game is sponsored by T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. Oh, well, the Falcons, everything's gone wrong for them today, and it has really for the last five games. They've lost five in a row. They've been in every game. They're not in this one. Carolina has come out with a pedal to the floor and their offense is 260 total yards with 930 to go in the first half. Not normal. Inside the 10 they'll start this drive and they'll go far sideline to Devin Funches the rookie during the break something you don't see all the time the head coach with nearly the entire team around. Him. That's the entire offense he's got around him and Matt Ryan Dan Quinn gives him a piece of his mind and Matt Ryan in there talking about this and this is leadership and what this team I think they understand they aren't going to win the whole thing this year but Dan Quinn is convinced they're going to turn this program this organization around and a lot of what they do now is going to affect them in the future. You get a Carolina timeout on the field here so they call their first timeout. And we will call a timeout as well Panthers. Their football, their lead. During the break, Ron Rivera, hot would be an understatement because he's usually emotionless on the sideline. <laughs> he doesn't like, you come out of a break, you have to use a timeout because of personnel substitution issues. He had every right to be upset. On second down, look at it to Stewart. And working his way across the 15 to the 16 be a third down so now this is regular speed let's watch that's Ron Rivera not the coach that's Ron Rivera the linebacker coming out <laughs> he's still got it in him you watch some old highlights of him with the Bears I wouldn't want to be hit by Ron Rivera I'll tell you that third down and two Play clock at three. The zone read. Cam's going to keep it. Avoids a sack. Now in trouble. He's going to throw it away. The Falcons were all over it, and the defense makes a much needed stand. Yeah, that's a really good defense. Third and two. That's an advantageous situation for the offense, but all over the zone read. They take away Stewart. Cam keeps it. Rasheed Hageman all over him, and Cam can only throw it away. Falcons have missed Devin Hester this year. He just came back last week, and even though Eric Weems did a nice job in his absence, this guy is obviously one of the greats in NFL history. I just wonder if he's 100%. He had a bad toe injury, and that's tough for a guy with speed. 
See if you get a chance to return one. Flag flies. Hester dancing around. Good return, but we wait on the penalty, and that may be coming on back. After the 49 yard punt by Norton. So let's see what the penalty is. A lot, a lot of discussion here for this. The flag came out very early in the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Receiving team number 36 was blocking a player while he was out of bounds. This 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. That's on Kamal Ismail, one of the backup safeties. Falcons have the ball looking for something on offense. He was sponsored by the all-new Fiat 500X crossover. It is the holiday season in Carolina, and the Panthers have taken plenty from the Falcons early. 21-0, Atlanta looking for something on offense, and Matt Ryan trying to give it to him, and that'll help. Get it to the big playmaker, it's Julio Jones. And that's good for a first down. You know, John, we, we go back to that shot we had a few minutes ago when Dan Quinn had the whole offense around and Matt Ryan fired up. And, you know, Matt Ryan's a guy who did nothing but winning when he came into the head, you know, got this team 10 yards from a Super Bowl in 2012. And, you know, I asked him about dealing with the losing and he said it's easy to say time to toss it in, but um, not the player he is. He said, you got an opportunity every Sunday. And he's talking about this. What an opportunity to go change our fortunes. He's going to fight. Has time here coming near. Side just missed. He was looking for Roddy White. And he underthrew him a bit. Game break time. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. All right, Philadelphia and Buffalo each trying to stay alive in their respective playoff hunts. Sam Bradford. Looking up with the rookie, Nelson Aguilar. 53 yards on the score. And it puts... Philadelphia up by a touchdown in the second quarter. Kevin John and Pitt. Kurt, thanks. I Eagles, you, Giants, Redskins. Who wants the NFCs? Yeah, I tell you what, Philly made a statement last week. I don't care who New England doesn't have. It's hard to go into Foxborough and get a win. Sure is. Second down, no run. Freeman. A yard. That's it. Well, the NFC East, you wonder who's going to take charge at this point. It's going to come down to the wire. Washington is winning in Chicago 14 to nothing today. And the Giants play Monday night. And even Dallas, they're right there at 4 and 8. Hard to believe. It happened some years. Of course, Dallas, Green Bay, that's America's game of the week. It'll be later coming up on Fox. Important game for both teams. Third down and nine. Four-man rush. Ryan complete, and he's got a first down. He's going back to Roddy White, who hauls it in, and he moves the chains, 13 yards. That's good protection by the Atlanta offensive line. Matt Ryan is a step-up quarterback. He needs to step up in the pocket. Watch how this pocket develops. You see the C shape to it, the cup, and that allows Matt Ryan to step up in the pocket. What's happened too much to this Atlanta Falcons offensive line is like a trash compactor Matt Ryan's in. They just get pushed back into him, and then he can't step up. Flag comes out, coming near side. And Ryan has a completion to Justin Hardy. But let's see what the penalty is. Illegal substitution offense. Number 42 came all the way to the huddle and returned to the sideline. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's a little bit of a point of em emphasis after it happened a couple times in the Panthers-Saints game last week and wasn't called. And so it's first and 15. That's DeMarco, the fullback. Penalty was on him. 5.51 and counting to go in this first half. Falcons have lost five straight games, but yeah, you look at the games, all five of them, they've lost them by three, by one, by three, by ten, and by four. It's 
Pressure from Davis, picked up initially, and then Ryan gets it to Julio Jones. Going to pick up about five. Let's check in with Mike Hill for another game break. A hey, big blow for the Bengals. Andy Dalton now with a thumb injury in a cast. So A.J. McCarron has to step up, and he stepped up big time. Finds A.J. Green, 66 yards for the score. McCarron's first career touchdown pass still, still is up 13-7 in the second. Kevin John, back to you. Oh, that's enormous. Well, thumb and right thumb is what I saw. Not good. Oh. I mean, the Bengals trying to get the number one seed at 10 and 2. So that's a developing story. Second down. Quickly unloads to Tammy, the tight end. It puts the shoulder down and is knocked out of bounds just before the 45. So a makeable third down is coming up. Well, you look at the AFC playoff picture. Right now, the Bengals are the number one seed. So, I think Andy Dalton now for his foreseeable future with an injury to his throwing thumb is big. Third and three. Pressure, Ryan goes down. Thomas Davis wrapped him up. Thomas Davis. They employ the double A look. There's Thomas right there. He's going to come. He's going to run right through Devontae Freeman. That man, as my old friend Warren Sapp used to say, should be eating some pineapple. He needs to go to Hawaii. His sixth sack of the year for Thomas Davis. He does it in the run game, the pass game. He rushes the quarterback. He's playing extraordinary football. And another punt for Atlanta. Bosher high, but a little short. Again, fair catch. Well, first it was the Carolina offense that started off, and this defense hasn't allowed much for the Falcons. 21-0. Panthers. And Ryan trying to find some answers, and it's pretty tough to do because this Carolina defense is fast, and they are all over the field so far. Yeah, you can play with emotion. They're outmanned right now. And Carolina's the better football team, and Atlanta's got to change that with good drafting and free agent acquisitions. We're going to run it near side, Stewart. Physical run for just two yards. Justin Durant in on the play. Well, I'd say it's gone well for this Carolina offense and the big plays they've gotten, too. They've been right around the middle of the pack and getting the big plays because they run it more than anybody else, but it hasn't been an issue today. Had a 44-yard run from Stewart. Had a 74-yard touchdown to Ted Ginn, and then a 46-yard touchdown to Ted Ginn. Second and seven. And to set up a screen to Stewart. He's got some room. Gets a block first down and across the 35. Nice block from Trey Turner, the right guard. And another first down. Well, Kevin, when you talk about Cam Newton, I think so much is what he's doing at the line of scrimmage. And that particular play, he checked to that play. We're seeing it over and over. They're handing him the keys to the car, so to speak. Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator. They've given more to Cam, and he's handling it. Ron Rivera, his head coach, says it's like Madden to him without the controller. He is the controller. And he controls this throw to Mike Tolbert over the middle. And he's going to be close to a first down. Well, when you look at Cam Newton in his fifth year now, he just looks so comfortable. The former Heisman winner, national champ. Here's how he shapes up in the MVP race with all these great players this year. His 32 total touchdowns, second in the NFL, and John, you think he is the league's MVP. Well, that's how I have him in order. And, you know, you can look at all the numbers, but the guy's winning. He hadn't lost. Mm -hmm. And then just the eye test. He's doing so much, throwing the football at the line of scrimmage, in the run game. He affects this team. I think he's the best player in football right now. And he's playing like it again today. These Panthers trying to go to 13-0. and He hit the two-minute warning against Charlotte, 21-0. It's our director, Artie Kempner, in the Santa costume using iTunes. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Pete Machesco, our producer in the white beard with a blue Santa costume on. Good oh, job, oh, as oh. always, boys. Glad to have you here in Charlotte. Pam Oliver, John Lynch, I'm Kevin Burkhart. Two minutes to go in the first half. Panthers football up 21, and Cam's going to keep it. And the Falcons, Ishmael all over it. But the one thing the Falcons defense hasn't hasn't fallen for it today. They've been all over that zone read play. Yeah, they've been very good on that zone read play, and they gave it a lot of attention this week. Talking to Dan Quinn 
He said one of the challenges against this Carolina team, they throw so much at you in the run game alone. Mm. The traditional two-back stuff, the gun runs, the quarterback gun runs, a lot to prepare for, but the thing that I notice, they block it all very well. Third and one. Stopped him there, too. I don't think he got it. Cam is bent backwards here. You gotta be careful. Looks like, he's, looks like he's in some pain here. In that pile. It's about the last thing you want to see if you're a Panthers fan. Wow, they gave him that first call. <laughs> Based on what? <laughs> I have no idea. So it is a first down. Let's watch again. Watch, he doesn't move. That ball is not over. Now the yellow line is unofficial, but that is the line to gain approximately. And Dan Quinn can challenge us if he wants. Well, this is challenged from up top within yeah. two oh, minutes. Oh, right, we are within two minutes. Good point, John. And they, they are challenging it. And I think this will be overturned. Yeah, a reviewing it better way to describe it with 49 seconds ago in the first half. So they will look at it. I... Why we've got a moment while the booth looks at this play. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, do the Kansas City Chiefs get their seventh straight win? Will LaShawn McCoy be homecoming king in Philly? And can the Bengals take the throne as the kings of the North? Plenty of questions out there. We'll try and answer them for you coming up on the Visa Halftime. Apparently, Kurt and I got the memo of the pink tie, John. You did not. You went rogue <laughs> with the Navy, although I like yours. They moved the, they moved the chains already the first down as they look at this play, but I, I'm with you. I don't I didn't see any movement forward uh, on that particular play at all. Now, granted, the yellow line is for us. It's not on the field, but just look at his forward progress. He's short. He doesn't, he doesn't he move go anywhere. It. Here's a good angle. You see the sticks there, and he's short of the line to gain. Now, is that enough to overturn it? I think so. Tony Corrente looking at the play, tucking in with New York. I mean, you would think now with 49 seconds left, you wouldn't take a chance if this is reversed and go for it. I think we're finally going to get the call here. This is taking a while. Here's Tony Corrente. After review, the ruling on the field of a first down will stand. Must have had another camera we didn't have, John. <laughs> I just don't know what they saw. Oh, boy. Anyway, first and ten no, for the Panthers. No comprende. I don't get it. Here's the thing. That's a big call. Instead of the Falcons potentially getting the ball back, got two timeouts left, does Carolina. And he comes near side, does Newton incomplete. He was looking for Corey Brown on the play. So a second down and ten. Get off to such a quick start. Falcons defense has actually stabilized a little bit since then, but they took such a haymaker early. Panthers had 260 yards in the first quarter. They've outgained Atlanta 295 to 97 in this game. Four man rush. Newton off his back foot fires. Corey Brown, what a catch! And he's out of bounds, too. Inside the 30, they're going to mark him down at the 28. It's a gain of 26. Cam Newton hurting a little bit. He's going to take a knee. But this throw, I mean, my goodness, watch the hit. This throw is just another laser. Don't know what happened. You wonder back to that fourth down the quarter or the third down the quarterback sneak if that's when he got tweaked. But look at this throw. I mean, you talk about in a tight window right on the right side where only Corey Brown can catch it. That's a big time throw. 
Fans react because Newton jogs off the field under his own power. Looking at that left hand. Derek Anderson, the veteran, has been their longtime backup quarterback. And Anderson is a good backup quarterback. He came in and won two games for him last year when they had that drive for the playoffs. The MVP chance start here in Charlotte. Anderson comes on in. 11th year man originally from Oregon State, former Pro Bowler with the Browns, and got a chance to put some points on the board for Carolina. 33 seconds left in the half. They've got one timeout. Already in field goal range for Graham Gano. Anderson looking to throw over the middle. He's got a completion inside the five. It is Brown. How about that call to the bullpen? <laughs> I love it. Derek Anderson comes in and says, hey, Cam, this MVP stuff's not that hard. He comes in. I love it. Cam Newton goes and gives him a little appreciation. But I love the aggressiveness. Don't come in handed off. Come in, let the experienced veteran sling the ball downfield. That's exactly what Derek Anderson does. That's a great reaction, too. Anderson's as good a backup as there is in the league. He really is. You just mentioned, dude. He's been to a Pro Bowl. Uh -huh. He's had a lot of starts. That's what you want at that backup quarterback position. And that's the thoroughness of this. Yes, they have stars, but they also have so many good role players here in Carolina. This roster has been constructed beautifully by Dave Gettleman, the general manager, and Ron Rivera, the head coach. So... Panthers use their final timeout. They are reviewing this just to make sure that Corey Brown had this ball. We'll look at the angles that we had. It, it looked initially like he did. But we'll take a look at some more of these angles. It's been a long two minutes here. Let's watch this side of things. See the Now there's a couple things here, John. First is the ruling of a catch on the field. Second, the ball can move, but you have to have possession. And I'm not sure that he did, looking at it that way. We have Mike Pereira from L.A. Mike, what's your take on these replays here? Yeah, it was interesting because we started looking at it immediately. Did he really have total control of the ball before the ball turned over and hit the ground? He did maintain control after. I will say that much. But it almost looks like the ball really turns over on this shot. You watch it with the right hand, now rolls to the ground right there. If I had my druthers and was under the booth, I would probably overturn this because he's going to the ground and the ball touches the ground, and I don't think he really demonstrated clear control. But I must say, as we saw on the uh, line to game play, they're pretty much staying with the calls that are being made on the field, that's for sure. Yeah, that's been a theme. Are you on that new catch committee, Mike? Uh, no, they didn't. They don't seem to ask me for my opinion very often anymore. I'm not, not so sure. I'm not so sure why. You should be. <laughs> I think I've got it now, though. I'm really happy. I think the first thing you had to do is you're on your feet or you're going to the ground. Well, this is clearly going to the ground, and so that adds the other After element. Review, the ruling on the field will stand as a completed pass and a first down for Carolina. Mike hit it exactly. Mike, we appreciate you. Make it so easy. Yeah. It, it, certainly looked like it was questionable. They are going more and more just sticking what's on the field unless it's absolutely you could tell. Well, Panthers may get the benefit of a couple calls in this drive, that's for sure. No timeouts, first and goal, 26 seconds to go. Newton, the throw, and zone incomplete. Looking for Olsen. And he's a little slow to get up as he grabs his left knee. Well, it's not good. Greg Olson is a leader. He's a star for this team. Let's watch the play. See him get hit and bend back on that left knee. And 
You talk about players that you could ill afford to lose. Greg Olson is right at the top of that list, playing at such a high level. Really, Cam Newton's top target. He made the Pro Bowl for the first time last year. And John, as you alluded to earlier, his receiving has gotten better and better. And well, that's a good sign. Kevin, he's a guy, he, he doesn't come off the field either. I no. mean, he, he plays nearly every snap, and he has for the last three years. He's played almost 99% of the Panthers' plays this year, which is unheard of for a tight end. And as far as tight ends go, only Jason Witten has a higher percentage, but he's played the most plays coming into today. He said it's a great sense of pride for him to be on the field for all the passing plays, but for the blocking plays, too. Now, when I played against him early in his career, the scouting report was pass-catching tight end. Uh -huh. Now he's become that complete player. So they check on Olsen. And a second and goal with 22 seconds to go. Newton zips it in, and we've got a touchdown. And Dixon. The backup tight end. Penalty coming in. So hang on. Pass interference. Defense number 23. This penalty is declined. Result for the play. Touchdown. Kevin, all over my notes this week, the name Brett Favre was on my notes when it came to Cam Newton. You look at the tremendous catch, but the reason why, when I played against Brett Favre, the velocity that he threw the ball with in the end zone, that's how you get it in those tight windows. That ball has some cheese on it. Cam Newton firing, and these Carolina Panthers receiving targets have learned how to catch it. This thing is a well-oiled machine offensively in Carolina right now. So let me get this straight as Gano will attempt the extra point and he slips it in there. The quarterback Cam Newton goes out for a play for an injury. The backup comes in and fires a first down for 26 yards. Then the start tight end goes out and Ed Dixon, the backup, who plays a lot obviously, but he comes in and catches a touchdown. I think it speaks to the depth of this team. You talk about stars, you talk about depth. They have it all in Carolina, and that's why they're well on their way to their 17th straight regular season win. How about the first half from Cam Newton? 12 of 17, 246 yards, three touchdowns. It's the best first half of his career, and that is great. That's something that Cam has started. And in that shot, he's about as hot as Steph Curry is in the NBA, even though they lost last night. That's maybe the biggest concern right now. They cannot have him out. Walking okay at least. We'll check on Greg Olson you as know, Kevin, we go to the break. Kevin, you know, they've clinched, you know, in terms of the playoffs. And we talked to Ron Rivera and we asked him about the approach if continue if they continue to be undefeated. Are they going to rest players? And he said, we'll play each game as I see fit. We'll take it as it goes. He talked about 05. He was a, on that Chicago Bears staff with the Chicago Bears. They rested some players. And he said players came back rusty in the playoffs. He doesn't want to do that. This one out of the end zone, and the Falcons will have it with 17 seconds to go in the half. What if you died and then were brought back to life? This January, one man will find out from the executive producer of X-Files in 24. Comes the intriguing new drama, Second Chance. Series premiere Wednesday, January 13th, and it's on Fox pretty good track record of shows with the X-Files of 24 so that should be interesting as Ed Dixon in his sixth year has a second touchdown catch of the season Falcons will take it in and go to the locker room and try and figure out what in the world hit him in this first half the Cam Newton show and it is a good show I'll tell you 28 to nothing for the undefeated Panthers over the Falcons. Kurt and the fellows from L.A. with a halftime show coming at you. Today's excitement is brought to you by Nissan. Airs it deep. There's Ginn. He's got it. Touchdown. What a show. What a show. Unbelievable. Yeah, and the Panthers are flying here in Charlotte. 
And that was today's excitement brought to you by Nisa. Yeah, these Panthers 12 and 0, and they've looked every bit of it here today. Cam Newton, he got a little tweaked on the quarterback sneak late in the half. Derek Anderson came in and threw one pass, and you wonder. Wonderful play, quite honestly. It's 28 to nothing as we get set for the second half, and we welcome you back inside the booth. He's John Lynch, nighttime Pro Bowl safety, and I'm Kevin Burkhart. How about from the Falcons' perspective now? I mean, what do you do if you're Dan Quinn? You've lost five in a row and then this. Well, look, when we talked with Matt Ryan, he said the bottom line, forget about all this chemistry. we got to score points. Yeah. Well, they have zero points right now. They're going up against a team that just is outmatching them right now. You're building for the future if you're the Atlanta Falcons right now. you got to come out and compete in this second half. And we'll see if they can do just that. Falcons, you remember, won the toss and deferred, so they will get the ball here. And Hester will come up and take it around the two. Tries to get a block. Nice return. Devin Hester doing what he does best. Brought down across the 35. Couple of key injuries to look at near the end of the half. Let's go down and check on that with Pam Oliver. Yeah, Kevin, but first, Dan Quinn walking in with him. He was relatively upbeat despite the carnage, but he says we have got to play poised. He is surprised they came out and played the way they did in the first half. Now for those injuries, Ron Rivera told me that tight end Greg Olson and that knee that it is nothing serious. He will wear a sleeve and see how it goes. Meantime, Jonathan Stewart is the one to worry about. He may have sprained his foot. Back to you. Ooh. All right, Pam, thanks very much. So, and that's the thing, John, what you're talking about is first down line gets jacked and incomplete for Toy Lolo as Luke Keekley came in out of flash and hit Matt Ryan. But that's the thing to talk about as we look at Keekley here is, is, you know, Rivera, how do you determine who to play, who to not, and watch these injuries going forward? Uh, I know one thing, you keep that guy in 59, <laughs> my goodness. But I tell you what, what Pam just said about Jonathan Stewart, as I look, look through this roster, we mentioned Greg Olson. Well, Jonathan Stewart, who's the backup? Fozzie Whitaker is really a third down back. Not a whole lot behind Jonathan Stewart. He's having maybe his finest professional season. Light clock in issue, down to two. They'll get it off. Ryan near side has Tammy the tight end. And he shoved out of bounds around the 45. Let's go back and look at the Greg Olson play. This was in the end zone. And watch his left knee here, number 88. He gets sandwiched in between two defenders and bent back. The positive thing is that here he is. He ran out of the locker room. He's doing drills. Whether he plays or not, I'm not sure. But the good thing is he's out moving around. And the report that Ron Rivera gave Pam. So a third down for Atlanta. They're just two of seven on third down today, and they've been the second best team in the league on third down coming in. Ryan hit as he throws incomplete again. Looking for Julio Jones, but Ryan took another hit. Thomas Davis keekly around it as well. I want you to watch this, the double A. They got two defensive linemen. What are they going to do? They're going to rush. Not so fast. They're both dropping out in coverage. Catches Matt Ryan by surprise as he's hit. Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers, drawing up all kinds of different looks. That look is just going rough shot all over the league. That double A. And the tough thing about it, you can bring so many different people, so many different variations from it. Another punt for Matt Bosher. Again, watches it sail over his head. And the Panthers will start on their own 20-yard line. Well, in this first half, the Panthers got off to a wonderful start. It scored touchdowns their first three possessions. Newton went deep to Ted Ginn for 74 yards. He found Ginn again. That one was from 46 yards. Got some running from Stewart and then fired a sidearm fastball to Ed Dixon for 28 points first half. And everybody's putting up numbers today. Newton, 246, three touchdowns. Stewart, 75 yards as he's closing in on a 1,000-yard season. But as Pam mentioned, a foot injury of concern, not only for today, but for going forward. So Newton is in there to start this half. Stewart is not. They have Tolbert and Fozzie Whitaker in the backfield. Ready? 
Give it to Whitaker. And he gets to the line of scrimmage and not much more for Brooks Reed. Tyson Jackson hit him. The nice thing you do have, Kevin, though, with Carolina is in Mike Tolbert, you've got kind of the Swiss Army knife that can do so much. He's a fullback, but he's very experienced and adept at carrying the football as well. So not only do you have Fozzie Whitaker, when you want to go to that bigger back, Mike Tolbert can carry the load. I have to think that if Stewart still has his uniform on, that's at least good news about the foot. Don't want to overstate it. Don't want to speculate. See he and Olsen on the sidelines. Second down and nine. First possession of the second half for these Panthers. And there is that Swiss Army knife, Tolbert. And he's going to pick up a couple. The Pro Bowler a couple years ago for his versatility. Catch the ball out of the backfield. <laughs> you don't look at your chart much and see 5'9", 250. <laughs> and I think 250, that ain't, I played against Mike Tolbert. It's more like 260. You're lucky enough if he scores, he then does the Carlton after a touchdown pass, John. So you never know. Third down and seven. Four man rush. Newton spinning away. Back near his own goal line now. Just dancing around casually. And finally taken down by Beasley. So Vic Beasley picks up his third sack after all the dance routine. Let's get a game break with Mike Hill. All right, guys, Steelers and the Bengals. Andy Dalton out with a right thumb injury. A.J. McCarron in and getting picked on by William Gay. 23-yard pick six. It's 23-7 Steelers in the third. Kevin, John, back to you. I'll tell you, the Pittsburgh Steelers coming on. Their one loss of late has been against Seattle, who is blazing hot. Mm -hmm. But they gave Seattle, in Seattle, everything that they could handle. They're right now on the outside looking in. Jets and Kansas City are ahead of them. Both the Jets and KC winning today. Here's the punt by Nortman, and it's a rocket. Hester all the way back to the 25. And now Hester is going nowhere. Trying to make something happen for this Falcons team. You can't blame him. But Teddy Williams was all over it. 65-yard punt, a return of minus one. So Newton actually gets sacked, and the Falcons get the ball back. They got a lot of work to do, though. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Panthers banging the drum today, trying to go 13 and 0, 28 nothing they lead. Falcons football. Here's Devontae Freeman breaking off tackles. Good run by Freeman. I'll tell you one thing, the Falcons. Clearly have a, you know some issues to work out right now after that good start, but they have a heck of a player for their future in Freeman. Oh, they do. They really do. Devontae Freeman, so versatile. He can do it in the run game. He can do it in the pass game. And above all else, he's a winner. He's a great spirit about him. Coming near side, looking to make two people miss, and he does. What a run by Freeman. Man, that was special. Out to the 41. You know, he's going to pick up nine yards and a first down. <laughs> that move right there. He put the brakes on. Kirk Coleman brings him down. But watch at the beginning of this run. Devontae Freeman, Dwan, Coney Ely there, Josh Norman there, and he leaves them both. Luke Keekley just came off the field for Carolina. We'll keep our eyes on him. Freeman lost the ball. He caught it, he lost it. Carolina says they have it. And, Kevin, and they do. You mentioned it earlier. Olsen goes out, Dixon catches a ball. Well, now Keekley goes out. A.J. Klein forces the fumble. This team has a lot of depth, and not just depth in terms of guys, depth that can play. And so a turnover for Atlanta. Can't get anything going. They're being shut out in Charlotte. It was sponsored by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. Back in Charlotte, Bank of America Stadium, traditional bowl. And it's 28-0 Panthers over the Falcons. Newton back to throw. He will do just that. And there is Mike Tolbert in the flat. 
inside the 40 on first down. There was some concern. I told you the uh, last play, Luke Keekley came out when the Panthers were on defense. Looked like they were working on his ankle there on the sideline, and they still are. The right ankle, which he had taped up. I think that's the thing to note for Carolina. Greg Olson, Jonathan Stewart, Luke Keekley, three of your stars, three of your best players have been injured. To what degree, we don't know, but three of your stars have been injured today. Newton, of course, went out initially, but he's back in there fine. Here's a jet sweep to Brown. Corey Brown has a first down inside the 30. Good run from the man formerly known as Philly. Got some grass to boot in the helmet. Go back to that Luke Keekley injury. There he is. You don't see a whole lot, but that's where we think he had the ankle injury. Taped that right ankle. And he kind of kind of hobbled off after that. Don't worry, Pam Oliver's on it. She'll check in and we'll see how he's doing. First and ten Panthers. From the 30, it's Whitaker. They're gonna toss it coming back to Ginn. Cam throws a block. Again, trying to get to the edge, and he's going to pick up about five. I guess when your quarterback's the size of a linebacker, he can throw blocks, huh? <laughs> we talked earlier, all the volume they throw. We just saw a jet sweep. Now you see the reverse, and watch Cam Newton. Tosses it. Here comes the reverse. Brooks Reed, here you go. Cam Newton doing everything for the Carolina Panthers. He's fun to watch, John. He's having an MVP season, and he is fun to watch. Back to throw it over the middle. Jericho Cotchery, who was thrown down, appears to be just shy of a first down, so he'll be a third down and short. You know, again, he's had the two big plays today, and you told the story about Rivera, how he said, hey, you're here to blow the top off. He had an interesting comparison to him when he met with him the other day. Willie Gulp, the old track star that was on his Bears Super Bowl team, and I think the similarity is they can flat out yeah. run and when you can flat out run you can affect defenses and that's what I love about Ron Rivera a lot of people he doesn't care about other people's opinions of players he's going to evaluate it for himself and say here's their strengths now let's play to them that's what the great coaches do they're in one they fake the run and go on for a completion and a penalty flag it's Funches who makes the catch and a penalty he says it's on Atlanta Pass interference, defense number 23. The penalty is declined. The result of the play, completed pass and first down. Devin Funches really emerging of late. A big receiver, Stan 6'4", sure looks 6'5 to me. And Cam Newton really starting to trust him. You see the sidearm angles. But the thing that is consistent with Cam Newton, he is letting go of that ball, letting it rip. He can throw it with touch, but most of the time, he's ripping that ball into tight windows. Newton looks like he's going to run. Nope. Looking to throw. Flag. He runs out of bounds. Holding offense, number 74. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Mike Rimmers right here on Paul Warlow with the hold. So, so far this drive, you heard the injury reports from Pam coming out of the break. Jonathan Stewart has not played. Greg Olson has not played. They had Scott Simonson, third tight end in their number 80 in that last series, along with Ed Dixon. There they are on the sidelines. So back to the 20. Here's Whitaker. Nice jump cut from Fozzie. Inside the 15 to the 14, he's got six. We know Pam Oliver's always on the case, right, Pam? What do you have for us? Well, Kevin, Luke Keekley was reluctant to even go over to the trainer's table to get looked at, but he eventually acquiesced. They retaped that right ankle. He simply rolled on it. It's deemed fine, and good luck holding him out. Back to you. 
Thanks, Pam. Great report from the senior correspondent. You were waiting to drop that title in. <laughs> there you go. So Keekley always wants to be in there. Second down. Goal to go. Newton to throw. Pocket collapses. Flag flies and he goes down. Dropped by Jonathan Babineau. And we've got the penalty too. Just waiting on the call. Illegal use of the hands, hands of the face, offense number 74. The penalty is declined, and the result of the play, third down. So they keep moving back, and there's a third and goal. Here, here's Mike Rimmers with the hands of the face on Vic Beasley and Jonathan Babineau. But if you're looking for a positive for the Atlanta Falcons, Kevin, they came into today last in the NFL with only 13 sacks. They now have two of them. Mm -hmm. Dan Quinn emphasized that. We've got to learn to finish. Talked about secondary moves. They're doing that here today. It's a third and goal. Newton near side for Funches incomplete. Threw it out of bounds. Pretty good coverage there. And so the Panthers will actually attempt a field goal here. Graham Gano onto the field. He actually, we're told, went through the concussion protocol. Remember, he made a tackle before on Hester. So, not often you see a kicker going through that, but apparently he's all right. This will be a 38 yard field goal. 25 of 30 on the year for Gano. And he punches that through. And it's 31 to nothing. Caroline. Game is sponsored by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49 only at BK. Santa Claus apparently has come to town. That makes Eric Mandia or AD happy. <laughs> so Graham Gano gets some action today. A 38-yard field goal after a nine-play, 23-yard penalty field drive. But still, more points for these Panthers. They've dominated today. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Devin Hester back to receive, and he won't have a chance to return that one. It's out of the end zone. Green Park and Uptown here in Charlotte pointing you in the direction. I'm curious which one points in the road of undefeated. <laughs> so these Panthers are going. Colin Coward and Cam Newton came into this game as my MVP pick. But can he really pull it off for the rest of the season? I'll get you into that and everything else you need to know after a busy NFL weekend. That's tomorrow on The Herd, noon Eastern on FS1. Hey, Colin, I think you're still safe with that bet because Cam has played one heck of a game here today. 265 yards passing, three touchdowns, and now it's Matt Ryan trying to get something going. Falcons being shut out. Ooh, boy, somebody got taken out on the sideline. Jim Kimmons, our cameraman. I hope that he's okay. That was a hard shot. Oh, boy, Jim. That's, that's what our guys do. They pop up. Now, that's tough. <laughs> Want to be a cameraman, huh, John? <laughs> And a third down is coming up for the Falcons as Freeman with a short game. And you like this. They're putting Matt Ryan obviously down 31 to nothing. But I think this is something you need to do more. Matt Ryan throughout his career has thrived on tempo, on pushing the pace, no huddle. Now they're putting him in that situation. Third and four. Blitz is coming. Ryan gets rid of it. Jones goes down to catch it. Did he do it? He did. First down. Josh Norman says, no, it hit the ground, but Julio Jones did. Looked like he got it. And so the Falcons move the chains. Over the middle, Hardy can't make the play. So these Falcons. They started out 5-0, and and look at the points. They're averaging almost 33 points a game. One and six cents. They're not scoring. They're turning the ball over with alacrity. And 
Well, I think there's a lot to do here. Part of me thinks that, hey, Dan Quinn, I think we both think he's going to turn this, this, this team around. But, John, I think in some ways, maybe that 5 0 start had kind of set the bar to an unrealistic level to what the Falcons aren't, at least yet. Maybe this is more of the reality. I don't think this bad, but somewhere in the middle is what the reality. They've got to make up ground on teams like the Panthers to compete with them. Ryan gets away, dropped it, picks it up, and then throws it out of bounds. Well, that was interesting. Uh, K1 Short, who has a sack already today, got pressure. Well, Matt Ryan under duress. K1 Short goes after that ball. <laughs> Matt Ryan uh, has the wherewithal to stick with it, doing his best. Garrow, you premium. <laughs> Falcons break the huddle and then there's a timeout by the officials on the field here. Not sure what the discussion's about. The clock issue? It was a clock issue. They had to reset the clock for a bit. And so they do it. And so it's a third and ten for Atlanta. Only 135 total yards here today. And on third down they haven't been great either. Four-man rush, but still pressure. Ryan spins away, dropped again. Ball comes out at the end. They say Ryan was down. The signal is he was down on the sack. It's short again, his ninth sack of the year. They're like an avalanche, John, this defense. Yeah, they really are. And this Atlanta offensive line, I said the numbers don't really tell the story. A simple stunt. You ought to be able to pick that up. Matt Ryan tries to step up. Instead, he's got a Carolina Panther right in his face. He has no other choice but to escape. Let's see if he is down. Ball's loose. So now you got to look if there was a clear recovery by the Carolina Panthers. That ball is Carolina out. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of the quarterback being down by contact. Uh, it's 100% a fumble. I, th I thought initially Carolina did recover. Let's see. And oh, they did. That's their ball. That'll be overturned. They'll review it. Panthers make another play. Today's game is sponsored by Cricket Wireless, the merrier carrier. We are back in Charlotte. The review has been taken place. Should be Panthers ball. It was pretty clear on the replay. Ron Rivera. After review, the quarterback clearly fumbled the football with a clear recovery by Carolina at the 26-yard line. It will be Carolina's ball, first and 10 at the 26. And Carolina will not be charged with a timeout. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 416. Kevin, how about the year of Kwan Short? His ninth sack. He's a defensive tackle. I mean, that's that's big production. And you know, I know in inner circles, the word on K1 was a great rusher coming out of Purdue, but maybe didn't have that motor. Mm. That motor looks pretty good to me. He now has the most sacks for defensive tackle in Panthers history, breaking Chris Jenkins' old record. He has been phenomenal, Pro Bowl type phenomenal. So, Carolina on the turnover takes over on the Atlanta 26. With 4.16 to go in the third. And here's New. Give it to Mike Tolbert. Bowling ball style up the middle, and Tolbert has about five yards. Well, you think about Ron Rivera, right, John? You go back and what they've been through. 2013, it didn't start out so well. I mean, they were one and three. All the headlines are hey, maybe Ron Rivera let go, fire him. Uh, he's on the hot seat. Well, what they do? They won eight in a row. It's a quick play here. And that's going to be Tolbert again, a little shy of the first down. And they go on and went eight in a row that year, and, and then they finish the season 12 and four. Right? Last year, similar thing. Right? They had a, a, a rough start. They won the last four to get in the playoffs. And Ron Rivera knows about being unbeaten at this point of the year. First time 12 and 0 as a player and a coach. He was 12 and 0 when he was a member of the 85 Bears. They lost to Dan Marino and the Dolphins on Monday night. And. The John Madden thing is very interesting. Get into it after the play. On third and short, Fozzie Whitaker. 
And it looks like they'll have enough for the first down. We'll see where they spot this football. But that's a relationship with John Madden, who, by the way, recovering from open heart surgery. We wish coach the best, but that's a relationship that started a few years ago, and it's fascinating. Yeah, you know, you, he's made tremendous growth as Ron Rivera as a head coach, and we talked about that with him, and he said, you know, if I could have done it differently, one thing I would have done, I would have had a head coach, a former head coach on my staff. I didn't have one. Jerry Richardson in his third year introduces him to Coach Madden, and he's been a tremendous kind of compass guiding Ron Rivera in the right thing, telling him to stick to his beliefs. If you believe in run the ball, run the ball. And to Coach Madden, I'd like to echo those sentiments. Get well, Coach. Here's Fozzie Whitaker all the way. Touchdown. <laughs> well, he is fun to watch, KB. This entire team, I'm telling you, what a great picture. But the depth, we keep going to it. They're losing players, but then they've got guys to back them up. And this team is just very well constructed. And I think anyone who doubts how good this team is, I've heard it often, the worst undefeated team I've ever seen. But this team can play, and they can play on every level. They're just looking to see if he got in, and as you can see, it's not close. He did first touchdown of the year for Fozzie Whitaker. Gano's extra point is good. It was a 16-yard run for Whitaker, and with 2.18 to go in the third quarter, it's a Carolina crushing. Look at Ryan Khalil, the center. You don't see many centers with the ability to get out front. Dermonte Dawson, a Hall of Famer, was kind of in the 80s, 90s who could do that. Ryan Khalil, unbelievable out in front. Cam Newton, he just makes it fun for these fans. And I'll tell you one thing, everything's fun when you're on the way to being 13-0. I'll tell you what, John, you know in the NFL, and this is really a wonderful tradition that Cam Newton has started. Now all the players give the touchdown balls and they're trying to find kids. And that's making a fan for life. It's great. You know, obviously, in the league, <laughs> you look at these guys having fun. Anybody could beat anybody in one week, right? But, man, good luck. This team, you said at the beginning of the broadcast, you thought they were the best team in the NFL. I, I don't know how you can go against that right now. Because I think they're so complete. They can run the football. They can pass the football. They got a quarterback. You talk about a dual threat. That, uh, that's the definition of one. He's a clutch player. He plays his best football when it matters most. Defensively, they have stars. They have depth. I just think it's a well-thought-out team, and they have star power like that guy, Cam Newton, in my mind running away with the MVP race, really. Luke Keekley did come back in that last series, so despite that ankle injury, he's fine. And it's all fine for Carolina today, up 38 to nothing. You talk about Cam Newton and the MVP, why do I think so? Well, here's why. He can throw the football in the red zone, flawless. And look at that velocity, but then you're playing the run, and Cam Newton going to keep it and run for explosive runs, not just little runs, explosive runs, and then at the line of scrimmage, above the neck. Here's the biggest improvement in his game. He checked to that play with Mike Tolbert. Cam Newton is doing everything we've seen him block today. He clearly is the MVP. Unbelievable. 38-zip Panthers. It's been their day. Atlanta looking for anything. Here's Freeman. And he's going to pick up a couple for Keekley. Makes a brick wall gain of three. Doesn't it say, John, too, we showed you about 2013. They got off to a slow start. They got hot. Last year, slow start. Same thing, they got hot. This year, they, there was no slow start. But doesn't it say something in this league about having some patience, letting a coaching staff and their players develop together? Because that's exactly what we're seeing. No doubt. I mean, there was a lot of talk about getting rid of Ron Rivera. His clock management wasn't great, but he's learned. He's gotten better. And this, this uh, organization, the ownership, Jerry Richardson, should be applauded 
for having the patience and the fortitude to stick with the guy because now he's turned into one of the better head coaches in football. Already the NFL Coach of the Year in 2013 as we have a penalty on the play. But you're right. There's some trash talking going on. I think Jerry Richardson deserves a lot of credit, you know, for just letting things play out. And there he is, one of the great owners in this league. Got to feel a lot of pride. This is this is home for him. Well, they 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 picked a winner in Ron Rivera. They gave him that opportunity Ron was looking for. And again, Ron will be the first to tell you he's a much better head coach right now. But they let him work through the tough times. And then he did something really smart, getting this franchise quarterback, getting guys like Luke Keekley. He and Dave Gettleman, Marty Herney was responsible for a lot of those moves. There are fouls against both teams that will cause a play to be replayed. Holding, defense, number 86, number 26. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 84. By rule, these penalties will offset replay second down. That'll cause us to go to a game break with Kurt Menefee. Kurt! Well, the guy that Ron Rivera replaced, John Fox, has to be happy his Bears have gotten back in it against Washington. Once down 14-0, Matt Forte's touchdown made it a 24-21 game in the fourth quarter. Devin, John, and Payne. Mm. All right, so that was developing into a photo finish. Washington by three. Second and seven for the Falcons after all that, after the offsetting penalties. Tevin Coleman in the game, a running back. Pressure, Ryan throwing it deep off his back foot, nobody home. Julio Jones stopped, Josh Norman kept going. Well, speaking of those Bears, Kurt so masterfully tied it all in. Ron Rivera, yeah, he was an 85 world champion Chicago Bear. Big old linebacker, number 59. He knows a thing or two about being unbeaten. He said the difference is you know, played in Chicago all the time. He's like, it's a little different here. It's just not the same. It's a smaller market. Called it a constant crush of media when he was a player. They don't have that here in Charlotte, and he thinks they've benefited from that. Third down. Ryan over the middle, and he's got a completion good enough for a first down. Julio Jones holds on in traffic. I tell you, even when you catch a ball on Josh Norman, you're not catching it by much. Josh Norman all over Julio Jones. You see him play the bail vision technique. All he's doing is watching the quarterback, but his ability to get in and out of breaks is matching great players like Julio Jones. Steps away from one sack. Now Ryan throws in, intercepted Luke keekley has got it. Fourth interception of the year for Keekley, and there is a penalty flag. That's frustration by Matt Ryan. They've made him dink and dunk all game long. He knows what we know. They haven't been going down the field, but you just picked the wrong guy to go after in Luke Keekley because his fellow Boston College guy just took advantage play. of it. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defensive team number 25. This 15-yard penalty will be enforced from where the play ended. First down. There's Luke Keekley right in the middle. This is Tampa 2 defense. Two safeties deep. Luke Keekley running through the middle of the field. We saw him on Thanksgiving intercept Tony Romo in that same coverage. Luke Keekley, he's got it all. He can play the run. He can play the pass 40 yards downfield. Incredible football player. And see this, despite the score, a little discipline, John? That's what the good ones do. When, when you're up, you hammer your team. Bill Belichick was a master of that. When you're having your most success, you let them know everything you're doing wrong. Ron Rivera on top of it. And Keekley bringing everybody in to finish the thought. New quarterback Derek Anderson's in. He pitches a Fozzie Whitaker. He dances his way across the 30 for a short game. 
So Cam Newton's day is done, and he was splendid. 15-21, 265, three touchdowns for Cam. Derek Anderson came in for one play when Newton got hurt and completed a 24-yard <laughs> pass that set up a touchdown in the first half. That he has had uh, a really good career here in Carolina. And, John, he had his chance, was it, a year ago to go and find a starting job, but he was so happy here he stayed. And Cam loves him as a backup. They spend a lot of time together. They have a great relationship, and that's a critical relationship. That backup quarterback at times is very instrumental in the success of the starter. Quarter about to run out. They'll get one more play. Anderson pats the ball far side for Corey Brown. And is that an interception? It's a bobble, and it's incomplete. That'll take us to the end of this quarter number three from Charlotte. It's 38 to nothing, Panthers. We start the fourth quarter. It's been all Panthers. They have backed up every bit of their 12 and all record, looking, as John Lynch said, like the best team in football today. I mean, yeah, the Falcons have been struggling coming in. They've lost five in a row, but they've been in every one of the games. They have not been in this game from the jump. That's just a credit to the Panthers and how well they're playing right now. Cam Newton's day is done. He takes a rest. Derek Anderson, the backup, comes in as he finished out the third quarter. 11th year veteran from Oregon State. Pro Bowler with the Browns back in 2007 where he threw for 3,700 yards. Third and seven. Anderson, there's a shot over the middle. A nice play. That's the third tight end, Scott Simmonson. And he takes a hit, makes a spin, and he's got a first down. You talk about it, just a team, a football team clicking on all cylinders. That's what we're seeing. You're seeing the backup quarterback to the third string tight end who's going to break a tackle from a very sure handed tackler at Paul Warlow. Carolina Panthers are in a zone and just putting on a show here today. Nine different players have caught a pass. Six different players have run the ball. It is spreading the wealth for the Panthers. First down, Tolbert. Shoulder down to the flag, far side of the field. Cam Newton's day, they scored touchdowns in their first three possessions. There was plenty of dabbing going on from Cam and the fellas. On their way to going 13 or no, let's get the penalty from Tony Correnti. Illegal formation on the offense on the left side of the line of scrimmage the wide receiver was covering up the tight end Five yard penalty repeat first down So how about Cam's day John? What did you think? I thought he was incredible. You know he did it all the deep ball The one thing they kept him in check was in the run game, but he said all right, you're gonna stop me on the run game I'm throwing it deep to Ted Ginn and he was so effective in doing so there's the fastball to Ed Dixon Nearly flawless for Cam Newton Ron Rivera had an awesome quote about Cam when we met with him on Friday. He said, you know, it, it really is like playing Madden with Cam Newton. You're just missing the controller. That sums it up beautifully. Bozzie Whitaker taken down at the line of scrimmage. You know, Kevin, I think one of the things, you know, that I'm so impressed with, so they draft Cam Newton as the number one pick, but then you got to build an offense around him. At the time, the offensive coordinator was Rob Chazinski. They studied a ton of Auburn films, said, let's put him in position. Mike Shula took the job when Chazinski left, and I think Shula's been masterful in building a scheme to fit Cam Newton. They studied hard. What does Cam do best? The staff tasked themselves with doing that. They identified it. Then they brought Cam in and said, Cam, what do you like most? If he didn't like it, they threw it out. So they simplified in that way. They built a system that is so tailored to their star quarterback, and it is a thing of beauty. Set up a screen, and Whitaker can't get by the initial wave. Paul Werlow was there to make the tackle, and it'll bring up third down. There's Jim Skipper, one of the fine assistants. So Mike Shula, Ron Rivera talked about that experience, that wisdom on the staff. Well, their offensive you know, I talked to Shula about his run game, how much volume is, and he said, I give all the credit to these guys. Wow. The running back coach. Look at the years of experience. That's a wealth of knowledge. Ray Brown, he's the assistant O-line coach, played 18 years. There's Pete Hainer, the tight, tight end coach. Jim Skipper, 29 years. I mean, a wealth of experience. He and Mike Shula and that entire offensive staff have done a fantastic job. Devin Funchess on the catch. And that'll bring
bring up fourth down. Here's Bruce DeHaven. He's a special teams coach for the Panthers. Talking about all the experience, he has been around forever. I mean, he was most notably on those Bills teams that went to four Super Bowls, and we talked him on the field. You see the chemistry here? Very much like those Buffalo Bills teams. Wasn't sure if it's because if it's a smaller town, smaller market. But for him to say that, who's been in all these different places for all these decades, that says something. We get a flag. We get a flag back, way back at the 38. John Matsko, the offensive line coach. And I tell you, Michael Orr right there, he's been absolutely. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 51. This 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. It is all smiles, all Carolina. All the time today, they have dominated. They're going to 13-0. The game is sponsored by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49 only at BK. It's been a festive atmosphere in Charlotte. Why not? It's 38 to nothing. Panthers on their way to going 13-0. Here's Julio Jones catching and breaking tackles and still going. Still going is Jones. And he's still playing hard. Into Carolina territory. They will spot him down. Right around the 35 and another Carolina injury. It's been a Ben Wickery, their starting cornerback. What a great competitor Julio Jones is. Down 38 nothing. He's not quitting. He's still in there. He's breaking tackles. There's Ben Wickery. He runs out of his tackle. One of the great pros in football, Julio Jones. They tend to Ben Wickery. Injury timeout. Wednesday, be there. A soccer legend and American hero takes your final bow. Don't miss Savvy Wambach's final game as Team USA takes on China. It's Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern, only on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. This Benet Ben Wickery injury did not look good, and they cart him off the starting cornerback for the Panthers. Oh. Team's up 38-0. You're going to be 13-0, and that's an area where they're short. You watch at the end of the play. Turn your head if you don't like watching because of the way it gets jammed up there. It just doesn't look good. Now, the good news, Kevin, we were down on the field before the game, as you see Benet Ben Wickery in pain. But Charles Peanut Tillman right there, he was running, and it seemed like running fairly well on the field. I talked to him. He said he hyperextended it. He feels like he's close. But what a great signing going and getting a veteran like Cortland Finnegan. A tremendous signing by... Dave Gettleman and Ron Rivera yet again. They just keep finding gems like this. Jared Allen earlier in the year. Yeah, Tillman's been out now for a few weeks with that knee injury, but as you said, maybe getting closer and the sign Finnegan. He played well last week. He might be starting next week. Here's Nick Williams off a deflection. Look at this. Nick Williams trying to go all the way, and he's hammered out of bounds at about the five. Mario Addison got his hands on the ball, but fortuitous hop right into Williams' mitts. It's a 29-yard game. See the quick screen deflected. Nick Williams gets it, and they really have a cavalry out front. I want you to watch at the end, though, the finish by Kirk Coleman. He's a guy, another great addition for this defense. Has had interceptions in four straight games, six on the year. Was a guy who hadn't done much in his career. He's found a home in Carolina. Another great free agent acquisition for the Panthers. Falcons just trying to score a point. First and goal. Draw Freeman, and he just can't go anywhere. Yeah, you know, the problem is Freeman's so fast that every time he tries to bounce it out, the Carolina linebackers are faster. Yeah, they're getting penetration inside, and then you try to run side to side against this defense, they're too fast. Red zone has been a real issue for the Falcons. Now, today it's not a factor because they didn't get in the red zone. But it's been a big problem why they've lost five in a row, uh, because you look here at the difference between these two teams. Ryan and the Falcons have struggled in the red zone. Panthers and Cam Newton have excelled in the red zone. Second and goal. This is the first Falcons trip to the red zone, as I said. Ryan throw in for Hardy. Little high incomplete. Kevin, the deal is we saw those four interceptions. Atlanta has seven on the year in the red zone. And when you do that, you come out with zero points. You talked about all the close games. If they just kick field goals, three points, don't turn it over, they may have won two, three of those games. So 
There's always going to be tight windows in there. You can't play scared, but you do have to play smart. In yeah, the seven turnovers. You're right, most in the league in there. And here a third and goal. You saw that last ball was tipped. Ryan and incomplete. Receiver Freeman fell down. He wanted a flag. There is none. And it's fourth and goal. Devontae Freeman, a very skilled receiver. He can run the whole tree. Freeman's going to be outside, comes underneath, and he does fall. And Kurt Coleman, darn near, had his fifth interception in five games. Falcons obviously going to go. Julio Jones not even in the game on this fourth down. Ryan throwing for White. Caught, but he's not going to get there. And the Falcons turn it over on downs, and again, the red zone, they come up short. Trey Boston was there first, and then he got a lot of help. Here's the play. Just not enough. All Carolina. This game is sponsored by Target. Expect more, pay less. Ron Rivera, stern as ever. You wouldn't know his team's up 38, John, but they are. About to go to 13 and 0. Oh, they start in the shadow of their own goal line after that defensive stop. Quick give up the middle. Mike Tolbert pushes the entire pile forward five yards. Saturday, the UFC's nine days of fury ending with a big world lightweight, lightweight title fight. We've got a couple of big fights on hand. UFC fight night is free, and it all begins Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on your local Fox affiliate. Hey, Kevin, we see those stern faces from Ron Rivera. Look, Ron Rivera is as genuine as it gets. What he's thinking about, I think it's a great illustration. They've got bigger fish to fry. The undefeated, great. They're happy. What they're concerned about, getting to Santa Clara. They want to get to and win the Super Bowl. Ron Rivera's got that in his sights. Penalty on the play on the second down run. So, John, what do you do? I mean, today, you know, they've had all these guys get get banged up here with Olsen and Stewart. Cam, obviously Cam came back in and played, and, and now it looks like a bigger injury to Ben Wickery, their starting quarterback. How do you play it? I mean, they still have to lock up home field Illegal advantage. formation. Left side of the offensive line. Wide receiver on the line of scrimmage covered that tight end. And there's Newton. So, yeah. penalty. All right, Tony, we heard enough. Anyway, so, you know, the Cardinals are right on their tail, John. They still have to lock up home field. How would you play this? You got to keep playing, man. You, you know, you, you can't play scared. And, you know, the quickest way to get injured is to play not to get injured. Yeah. So you got to play, like Ron said, you got to leave it to him as to when to take guys out. And everyone always says you got to sit him. Well, you only have 53 guys. Right. You got to play special teams, all those things. So you got to keep playing, in my mind, and then be judicious when things like this happen of taking guys. I'd, I'd have Cam Newton in the locker room right now <laughs> so that you aren't tempted to put him back in. I guess it's a good problem to have, right? On a third down, here's Anderson from his own end zone looking deep for Brown, incomplete, overthrew him. So even the backup quarterback taking shots downfield, but he just missed Brown, a little overthrown. And now Brad Norman will punt it away. With 8.30 to go in this one from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Well, they've done a nice job in here, John. I mean, this is uh, one of those old school stadiums, you know, but they've, they've put a lot of money in it the last couple of years, and it's a, it's a pretty place to come in and watch a football game. One of the rarer grass fields. It seems more and more fields are going to field turf. Here's Hester. Will he get a chance? Makes one tackle. This is not much there, but somehow he slips through. Still making it happen. Decent return. All Panthers, though, today. Cam Newton has had plenty to smile about today. He's done plenty. Three touchdowns passing. 
Carolina got up to a 21 nothing lead before you can blink. And they are going to be 13 and 0 today. And meanwhile, these Falcons and Dan Quinn, they've, they've got a lot to do. Matt Ryan's day is finally done. Sean Renfrey has never played in the NFL until right now. He completes his first pass to Nick Williams. And Nick Williams moves ahead for a gain of 11. And that's a first down. So Sean Renfrey, third year man from Duke, where he was a two year captain, finally getting a taste of the NFL. Certainly not the way you would want to do it. And we get a penalty on the play. Defense number 73. 15 yard penalty. After the play is over, it is second down. It's Ryan Schrader, the right tackle. He gave, he kind of went after Shaq Thompson, gave him a piece of his mind, and Tony Corrente called it, and Dan Quinn pulls him off the field. Dan Quinn, this is about letting people know what will be expected, accepted, what won't be accepted. Dan Quinn right now saying that can't happen. You watch at the end of the play. If you keep it going, he did that, then watch him here. Getting right up in Shaq Thompson's face, and that's when Tony Corrente threw the flag. So Jake Long, number 75, the four-time Pro Bowler. Remember him, he's had so many injuries the last couple of years, but he was signed earlier this year, hasn't played yet until now. He's on the right side on the right tackle. And we get a whistle, stop play. And Jake Long, they signed him, John, early in the year, and this guy was a fantastic. The question was concerning whether or not the yardage of first and ten is correct. It is correct, first and ten after enforcement of the penalty. <laughs> Ron Rivera gets a good chuckle out of that explanation. I'm just trying to finish a thought. That's all I'm trying to do. Jake Long was a great player, John. They, honestly, I thought he'd be in at some point earlier this year. He's coming back from a couple big knee injuries. He's in now, and that's incomplete. He's had two straight season-ending ACLs. Let's look at the NFC right now and see where we stand. We know the Panthers have the number one seed. They've clinched a bye, but not home field because the Cardinals keep on winning, too. They're right on their tail. Packers, big game later against the Cowboys. It's America's Game of the Week on Fox. Redskins are beating the Bears by three. Two minutes to go in that game. Chicago's got the football, though. Seattle is on fire right now. And that is the team that nobody wants to play. Devin Campbell, or Coleman, excuse me, with the carry. And he's going to have a first down. We saw Seattle live and in person last week. And oof, that's exactly what I said. This is a team no one wants to face. And there's a good likelihood someone like the Panthers could after that bye week. That's about the worst formula that I can think of. You won't have the year that you're having if you get home field advantage and then you end up playing the first game against Seattle. Hey, that's not easy. If you're going to win it, you're going to face some great teams. And You're right. Uh, you know, I, a lot of these Panthers players told us they feel like they got through the threshold when they came back against Seattle, who had been a nemesis earlier this year. Great tackle by Teddy Williams. That Seattle game, they had an unbelievable fourth quarter comeback there. You just didn't see it at the time. They went 27 to 23 in that game. Greg Olson had the big fourth quarter touchdown, and we did the playoff game last year. Carolina played Seattle well. They ended up losing, and in that game, a lot of those guys point to that game as being all right. We had had enough. That kind of a turning point. And having looked back, second down. It was Renfrey. And fires a wobbler high and incomplete. So the Panthers are going to be 13 and 0 in just over six minutes. And there have been other teams that have hit that threshold. As a matter of fact, seven teams have gone 13 and 0 in the Super Bowl era. Now, of those teams, five of them went to the Super Bowl. How many won it? Three of them. Three teams won it. Dolphins, Broncos, and the Saints in 09 were the last one. The Saints with Roman Harper as their safety. Roman Harper, part of this Panthers secondary. Third down, they're going to give a draw on the play. And that is going to come up shy. So it'll be a fourth and long from the 35. And Kevin Boyd, did, I enjoy, I, you know, I've known Roman Harper for a long time. 
but really have grown to respect the depth he has to him. And certain guys, you bring them in, success kind of follows them. He was in New Orleans when they won it. He talked about the other day. He said, look, all we have done is punch the ticket to the playoffs. Our goal is San Francisco. And we have to check things off one by one. That means one week at a time. And I think this team has such a great mentality led by Ron Rivera. So fourth down and eight. Falcons will go. Flag flies. Renfrey over the middle. He's got a completion and a first down. But Justin Hardy's got it. But we have to see what the flag is. False start. Offense number 15. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. There's time. Ben Jacobs on the ground. Backup linebacker hurt for Carolina. They check on him. Let's check on another game break. Mike Hill has it for us. Hey guys, don't forget America's Game of the Week is coming up next. Des Bryant and the Cowboys still in the mix in that crazy NFC East taking on Aaron Rodgers in the NFC North leading pack. Everyone remembers that controversial finish between these two in the playoffs last year. You get the rematch next. Kevin and John. Kevin, by the way, I love the beer. <laughs> All right, Mike. Thanks. I appreciate it. Makes one. 38 <laughs> nothing. Carolina. Five and a half to go. Luke Keekley in this defense pitching a shutout today. How impressive is that with Matt Ryan throwing a touchdown pass in 37 consecutive road games? So it's been a long time. Matt Ryan isn't in this game anymore. So good this Carolina defense was today. Fourth and 13 now with Renfrey at quarterback. He's in trouble and he is eaten alive. Kyle Love got there first. Big old 93 out of Mississippi State. Uh, this this has the look of a team that senses what's in front of them. It doesn't matter matter whether you're talking about Luke Keekley or Kyle Love. These guys are playing for something bigger. Dwan Edwards just walks Pearson back. Kyle Love in there. Dwan Edwards in there. This team is hungry and they are playing like it. John, now this is this is uh, watching watching the quarterback situation. Okay, I thought Joe Webb was going to come in and quarterback, but he's going to come in and play. Derek Anderson still the quarterback. <laughs> Joe Webb the quarterback, one of the quarterbacks, number 14, who does everything for this team. Now he's and, up here. And we got to tell you about this guy. This guy is, is something else. Remember a quarterback of Minnesota, he started a playoff game. Here's Fozzie Whitaker. Nice run. Joe Webb leads the Panthers in special teams tackles. Bruce DeHaven, who you showed earlier, said he, and this is pretty special when you have Cam Newton on your team. There's a lot of people who think he's the best athlete on the team. That's a former quarterback blocking, like you said, leading the team in special teams tackles. It's kind of that special thing that Carolina has going right now is that everyone has a role, everyone's accepting it, and everyone's playing for the bigger, something bigger than their own personal agendas. Meanwhile, remember, if you're just tuning in, Jonathan Stewart had that foot injury. He had the uniform on, but not didn't come back into the second half with the score the way it was. But Fozzie Whitaker has run it well. He gets it again, running left side. And it's going to be a short game of about two. Got eight carries for 35 yards and a touchdown, doing a nice job getting a chance to get a bunch of carries, really, for the first time all year. There's Stewart. That's really the only negative, and we've talked about the concern. It seems that Olsen and Stewart, minor injuries. Benet Ben Wickery, the cornerback, the starting corner, that seems like a more serious injury. He got carted off, went in for x-rays on the leg ankle area. Looks like Ben Jacobs, the backup linebacker, may be in concussion protocol right now. Third down and three. Run it to Tolbert. Tolbert oh, just laying the wood. I think he's going to be shy of a first down, though. He ran right over poor Justin Durant. Talk about a fire hydrant. <laughs> he's low to the ground, and he runs right through Justin Durant. Goodness. Try to do it again to Ricardo Allen, who did get him down to the ground. So a fourth and less than a yard here. Time ticking down towards two minutes to go. This one is a formality. 
quarterback sneak. Depends on the spot. It'll be close. Let's see where they mark this. John, other games of note uh, gone final now. Washington knocked off the Bears 24-21, so that'll at least keep them in a tie for first place in the NFC East. The Eagles gave up a 10-point lead. They and the Bills tied at 20 now in the fourth quarter in Philadelphia with the Eagles on the move in that game. Don't forget Cowboys and Packers. That's huge now. It's America's Game of the Week, and it's coming up in just a few moments on Fox from Green Bay. It's going to be interesting to see whether that end of the play, Hail Mary, that they made good upon by Richard Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers, whether that can ignite this Green Bay team that has been struggling mightily, and they did in that game, but they finished it in the right way. See if that can propel them to better things. Yeah, that'll be curious to see. You know, remember, meanwhile, the Vikings, they've now lost two games in a row, still right behind Green Bay and still in a wild card spot. Seattle's the team to watch. They romped in Baltimore today, and they're red hot. How about the Panthers? Trying to run the table, go 16-0. Here's what they have left. They're at the Giants next week, and then they're at Atlanta. And finally finish up home here with the Buccaneers. And that game's just gone final. Tampa has lost to New Orleans. The one that jumps out at you, at New York. I mean, you, anyone who's watched Eli Manning knows that any given day, he can get hot enough to carry a team and beat a team. So going to be an interesting to watch, one to watch, particularly if the Panthers are banged up. That play should take us down to the two-minute warning. And it's a good day if you are Jerry Richardson, that's for sure. Carolina, beautiful city, smaller city on the East Coast, the fall foliage, and I have no idea where there's a lighthouse around here. <laughs> three and a half hours from the water. Go figure. Ready on three, everybody dab. And here you go. There you go. They did it, trust me. Sacks is... Boy, it's, they're coming at you from all angles. It's A.J. Klein as Renfrey gets taken down. There it is, John. I told you. A.J. Klein says, you guys go ahead and dab or whatever they call that. I'm going to go ahead and sack Sean Renfrey. Third down. Renfrey incomplete. So the Panthers of the win will go to 13-0. They will clinch a first round bye. Again, with the Cardinals with two losses. They haven't clinched that home field advantage uh, throughout the playoffs just yet. They've got to keep winning to do that. But they know they at least have the division. They've got a playoff berth and they've got a first round bye. Not too bad with three weeks to go. Well, if there were any doubters coming into the day, I think a lot of those were answered. Granted, the competition, Atlanta on a free fall right now in terms of losing. But this Carolina Panthers team is for real. Impressive day all around. Fourth and 14. Renfrey back. Got to air it out for Williams. Overthrown, and it's intercepted by Kurt Coleman. The seventh interception of the year by Coleman, which ties him for the league lead. That's a fitting way to end this game. One in five straight games. Kurt Coleman's on fire, as is his entire team. Atlanta hasn't been shut out in a long time. December 4th of 2004 against Tampa Bay. It'll happen today. Well, Sean Renfrey, that's called a wounded duck, folks. And Kurt Coleman says, thank you very much. Kirk Coleman had 10 career interceptions coming into the year. He's got seven this year. Sometimes a change of environment. And again, I go back to Ron Rivera, not thinking about other people's opinions of players. They looked at Kirk Coleman, Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator, had history with them at Philly. You bring him in, and he's been a key and integral part of their success. Think Cam Newton's having fun? <laughs> he's having a great time. <laughs> I think he's doing a Hulk Hogan. He's going to both sides of the ring to get the fan approval. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this.
You know what, John? You're 13-0. You just won 38 to nothing. You can do whatever you want. Goodness. What a win for the Panthers. They're unbeaten at 13-0, and they crush Atlanta. 38 to nothing here from Charlotte today. Coming up after the game of the State Farm Game Break, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will have the scores and highlights from around the league, and they'll get you ready and take you up to America's Game of the Week. All Cam, all Carolina today. The Panthers posing for pictures. They're dabbing away. They're 13-0. What a performance today. For Pam Oliver and John Lynch, I'm Kevin Burkhart. Now to Kurt and the fellas. Scott.